Thank <laughs> you. 
Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of God to witness and bless the joining together of this man and this woman in holy matrimony. The bond and covenant of marriage was established by God in creation, and our Lord Jesus Christ adorned this manner of life by his presence and first miracle at a wedding in Cana of Galilee. It signifies to us the mystery of the union between Christ and his church, and the Holy Scripture commends it to be honored among all people. The union of two people in heart, body, and mind is intended by God for their mutual joy, for the help and comfort given one another in prosperity and adversity, and when it is God's will for the procreation of children and their nurture and the knowledge and love of the Lord. Therefore, marriage is not to be entered into unadvisedly or lightly, but reverently, deliberately, and in accordance with the purposes for which it was instituted by God. Francie, will you have this man to be your husband, to live together in the covenant of marriage? Will you love him, comfort him, honor and keep him, in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, be faithful to him as long as you both shall live. I will. <clears throat> Jared, will you have this woman to be your wife, to live together in the covenant of marriage? Will you love her, comfort her, honor and keep her, in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, be faithful to her as long as you both shall live? I will. And will all of you witnessing these promises do all in your power to uphold these persons in their marriage? We will. We will. Let us pray. O oh, gracious and ever living God, you have created us in your image. Look mercifully upon this man and this woman who come to you seeking your blessing and assist them with your grace that with true fidelity and steadfast love they may honor and keep the promises and vows they make through Jesus Christ our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We'll now have a series of readings. The first is from the Song of Solomon or the Song of Songs by Cole. And the two of you could turn. Yeah, perfect. A reading from the Song of Solomon. Set me as a seal upon your heart, as a seal upon your arm. For love is strong as death, passion fierce as the grave. Its flashes are flashes of fire, a raging flame. Many waters cannot quench love, neither can floods drown it. If one offered for love all the wealth of one's house, 
it would be utterly scorned. Here ends this reading. And now we have a poem read by Miranda. <clears throat> the Art of Marriage by Wilfred Arlen Peterson. Happiness in marriage is not something that just happens. A good marriage must be created. In marriage, the little things are the big things. It is never being too old to hold hands. It is remembering to say I love you at least once a day. It is never going to sleep angry. It is at no time taking the other for granted. The courtship should not end with the honeymoon. It should continue through the years. It is having a mutual sense of values and common objectives. It is standing together facing the world. It is forming a circle of love that gathers the whole family. It is doing things for each other, not in the attitude of duty or sacrifice, but in the spirit of joy. It is speaking words of appreciation and demonstrating gratitude in thoughtful ways. It is not looking for perfection in each other. It is cultivating flexibility, patience, understanding, and a sense of humor. It is having the capacity to forgive and forget it is giving each other an atmosphere in which each can grow. It is a common search for the good and the beautiful. It is establishing a relationship in which the independence is equal, dependence is mutual, and the obligation is reciprocal. It is not only marrying the right partner, it is being the right partner. And now we'll have a reading from 1 Corinthians by Kyler. <clears throat> a reading from 1 Corinthians. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part, but when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part. Then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known, and now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, and the greatest of these is love. Here ends the reading. And now we'll have a, a reading from a poem uh, by Turbo. <clears throat> to love is not to possess by James Cavanaugh. To love is not to possess, to own or imprison, nor to lose oneself in another, nor do docilely living separate lives in silence. It is to be perfectly oneself and perfectly joined in permanent commitment to another and to one's inner self. Love only endures when it moves like waves, 
receding and returning gently or passionately, or moving lovingly like the tide in the moon's own predictable harmony. Because finally, despite a child's scars or an adult's deepest wounds, they are open freely to be who they really are and always secretly were in the very core of their being where true and lasting love can be alone. This ends the reading. And the two of you can turn again and please rise for the reading of the gospel. Everyone. This is uh, the gospel of John chapter 15, starting with the ninth verse. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. This is the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. For the message, the message today, the homily is going to begin with a, a poem written by Lex, one of Francesca's closest friends. And so if you could go uh, and perfect and maybe take the microphone and bring it over here. Yeah. Perhaps you have loved each other for lifetimes. Perhaps every version of the both of you was made to love the other. Perhaps the feeling is nothing but coming home, having loved each other for an eternity. Maybe every cell in you whispers, it's nice to see you again every time that she smiles, or cries, or wakes up on a crisp January morning. And maybe there's comfort in the thought of a love that transcends timelines, traverses the universe, and conspires for you. But imagine instead that you were never destined to be. Think of the ways that you have carved a life together anyhow, woken up and decided for yourselves that this is the life worth living. Maybe it was always meant to be, but maybe you'll wake up every day and fight to keep this togetherness, wade through that ink black midnight and seemingly never ending storm in order to find your way back to each other. Regardless of whether or not the universe plucked you both from the cosmos and whispered this love into existence, you are both plants growing in the same soil with your roots entwined. You, go to gr you grow together but bloom independently, creating a landscape of each other. And I think that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lex. <clears throat> Beautiful, great lead-in. Uh, we've been preparing this uh, wedding for at least a year or so, and, and in the very first poem, it talked about the details of love, and I think the two of you know all about details, right? <laughs> Everything that goes into this very moment. Um, the last detail, I think I told some of you, is uh, bend your knees right now. Keep your knees bent, that's always a good thing. <laughs> And then I said, breathe. Uh, what an odd thing. Of course we all breathe, except when you're in front of a whole bunch of people, then you stop breathing. So breathe and bend your knees, and you've done a beautiful job putting this wedding together. Uh, they have been meticulous in choosing just the perfect scriptures, the perfect poems, and a perfect friend to create a poem. What a beautiful piece that was, Lex. Thank you. Um, you can tell the theme, of course, is all about love. And that's why we're here. In a way, I think God was uh, creating this bond between the two of you from the very beginning. I think from the moment you were born, you didn't even know it. And at one point, God brought you together, and your eyes were opened in a new way, and God opened a little bit of love and a little bit more to the point where you thought, well, of course, this is natural. We need, we need to be together. And, and there's, there's three loves that were actually talked about in all of these poems and scriptures. And, 
And there's, there's at least three loves in, uh, in the Greek language, and one is eros, and we heard all about that in the Song of Solomon. It's a, it's a poem from the scriptures about erotic and romantic and passionate love. And then we heard all about the philos love, the, uh, the, the brotherly and sisterly love, a love of friendship, uh, a sisterly love, uh, like the two of you know. Uh, sometimes that's just wonderful, and sometimes it's a little bit difficult. <laughs> and you and your brother, and, uh, and... But then the third love that John talked about in the gospel is the agape love, the unconditional love. And that's, uh, in many ways, the most beautiful and the most difficult sometimes, because that's when you just love each other no matter what. And, uh, and so the two of you are agreeing today and taking a vow to love each other. We're here to support you in that vow. And ultimately, God is the glue that will hold you together throughout life. And so today is a beautiful day, and you've done a wonderful job putting this together. So cheers to both of you on this wonderful day. <laughs> At this point, I invite um, the two of you and uh, gentlemen with the rings and Miranda to come forward to the altar. here and Miranda you could help her turn and you can turn and face each other and then Miranda if you could take her flowers as well very good <clears throat> and now we'll continue with the vows um, and Francie if you'd like to go first Okay, so we all know how this is going to be, so <laughs> bear with me for a minute. <laughs> okay. Jared Douglas, the choir, you are my best friend, my biggest supporter, and the absolute love of my life. I fell in love with you the first time we kissed on New Year's Eve six years ago. And from that moment on, I knew that you were someone special. You have been with me for all of the best moments of my life and held me through the worst. We have been able to grow together and build a life with each other that is rich and full of laughter and love. Our future holds a lot of unknowns, but I know as long as I'm with you, I will always be happy. No matter where we are in the whole world. I cannot wait to spend the rest of my life loving you. I promise that I will always be your biggest fan. I promise to create a home with you full of patience, love, understanding, and lots of rescue dogs. <laughs> I promise to be your adventure buddy, and I promise I will try to stay calm when things go wrong. Most of all, I promise to choose you and love you for the rest of my life. All right, so anybody who knows me, I like to ramble, so I'm going to try to keep this short. I did write it down this time, so we are in good shape. <laughs> I stand here before you as a product of those closest to me. My parents, my family, my friends, but most of all you. You are the single greatest driving force in shaping the man standing in front of you. I'm wearing a uniform that I may not be wearing without you. You make me better. I say that all the time. For this, I promise you I will never stop striving to be a better person, now a better husband, and in the future, a better father. Your strength and compassion for our love and future has never wavered, and I promise you that I will care for you and above all, strive to be better for you. I love you. Beautiful. OK. 
Okay, Francie, you take that, and with your right hand, take his, and repeat after me. <clears throat> In the name of God. In the name of God. I, Francesca. I, Francesca. Take you, Jared. Take you, Jared. To be my husband. To be my husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better or for worse. For better or for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. This is my solemn vow. This is my solemn vow. Beautiful. And you can loose your hands. <laughs> Jared, uh, with your right hand, if you would take her right hand and repeat after me. In the name of God. In the name of God. I, Jared. I, Jared. Take you, Francesca. Take you, Francesca. To be my wife. To be my wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poor. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. This is my solemn vow. This is my solemn vow. All right. Beautiful. If I could have the rings at this time, please. Very good. I'll offer a blessing on these rings, and then they'll offer them to each other. Bless, O Lord, these rings to be a sign of the vows by which this man and this woman have bound themselves to each other. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Okay, Francie, I'm going to have you take the microphone again, and let's make sure it's on. And now if you would place his ring on his left hand, left ring finger, and just hold it on there, kind of hold his hand. Perfect. And then repeat after me. Jared, I give you this ring. Jared, I give you this ring. As a symbol of my vow. As a symbol of my vow. With all that I am. With all that I am. And all that I have. And all that I have. I honor you. I honor you. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Okay. You can loose your hands and hand him the microphone. And if you would take her ring and place it on her left hand and left ring finger. Perfect. And just hold it on there. Yeah, perfect. And then repeat after me. Francesca. Francesca. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a symbol of my vow. As a symbol of my vow. And with all that I am. And with all that I am. And all that I have. And all that I have. I honor you. I honor you. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You can put all your hands together now at this point. And I wrap their hands in what's known as the stole. It's the sign that the, the cloth that the clergy wears, a reminder that they're there to serve each other and love each other in life. Now that Francesca and Jared have given themselves to each other by solemn vows, with the joining of hands and the giving and receiving of rings, I pronounce that they are husband and wife in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Those whom God has joined together, let no one put us under. Amen. <laughs> Very good. And let us pray. 
eternal God, creator and preserver of all life, author of salvation, giver of all grace. Look with favor upon the world you have made and for which your son gave his life, and especially upon these two people whom you make one flesh in holy matrimony. Give them wisdom and devotion. Grant that their wills may be so knit together in your will and their spirits in your spirit. Give them grace when they hurt each other to recognize and acknowledge their fault and seek each other's forgiveness. Make their life together a sign of love. Bestow upon them, if it is your will, the gift and heritage of children. Give them such fulfillment of their mutual affection that they may reach out in love and concern for others. Grant that all married persons who have witnessed these vows today may find their lives strengthened and their loyalties confirmed. And grant that the bonds of our common humanity, by which all your children are united one to another, and the living to the dead may be so transformed by your grace that your will may be done on earth as it is in heaven, where, O oh Father, with your Son and Holy Spirit, you live and reign in perfect unity now and forever. Amen. If I could have the two of you kneel at this time now, and Miranda, if you could help them out a little bit here. Perfect. I invite you all to please stand at this time for the blessing. Oh God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send therefore your blessing upon these your servants that they may be that they may so love honor and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you. The Lord mercifully with his favor look upon you and fill you with all spiritual benediction and grace that you may be faithfully living together in this life and in the age to come have life everlasting. Amen. Okay, you can stand at this time and turn towards the people. I now would like to introduce to you Mr. and Mrs. LaCroix. You may now kiss the bride. <laughs> to exchange the peace together at this time and greet each other in the name of the Lord and uh, Francie and Jared you can make your way down to the chairs and um, so please greet one another in the name of the Lord and um, you could be seated as you are finishing as we prepare for communion. And as you finish the piece, you're welcome to be seated. Um,
we will now continue with the service of Holy Eucharist. Please stand at this time. As the Lord is with us, we lift up our hearts and we give thanks. And it is a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Because in the love of two people, you have given us an image of the heavenly Jerusalem as one in Christ. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night, he was handed over to suffering and death. Our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, and Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. You may be seated at this time. If you would like communion, I will be bringing it out uh, of the bread only. And if you'd like it, uh, you're welcome. Uh, just put one hand over the other. That will cue me that you'd like communion as I come down the aisle. You can make your way over. 
to the center aisle. And if you uh, do not want to take communion, just put both of your arms over your chest as I come by, and it'll cue me uh, to offer a blessing as I go by. But you are welcome.
I offer you at this time a, a closing prayer and a blessing. Let us pray. O oh God, the giver of all that is true and lovely and gracious, we give you thanks for binding us together in these holy mysteries with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that by your Holy Spirit, Francesca and Jared, now joined in holy matrimony, may become one in heart and soul, live in fidelity and peace, and obtain those eternal joys prepared for all who love you. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Okay, Francie and Jared.